Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk about a nice article that I found in Your Physique, January 1949. It's by Alan Steffen, How I Developed My Chest. This particular photo was obviously from the article. I've never seen this sh uh, shot before, but it really does show um, Alan Steffen at his greatest. I mean, look at that side chest. He's expanding his rib cage. He's got his arm pressed tightly against his chest. Pectorals are bursting out. Look at that biceps, it's like a softball underneath his skin. It's about to explode. He looks amazing, and this is the kind of physique that I really love to talk about. Let's get a look into Alan's uh, article on chest. The source, as I mentioned, was Your Physique 1949 January issue with Steve Reeves on the cover. I've done a uh, review on this particular magazine and I love this cover with Steve Reeves V tapered as with I mean, <laughs> arguably one of the most aesthetic physiques of all time and beautiful physiques I mean you could just look at that all day you could put it on your wall and go that's what I want to look at that's classic that's aesthetic that's Steve Reeves of course Alan's tips let's get to the article and not dwell on Steve Reeves um, he mentions that in order to develop a very well and broad and thick chest there are several factors uh, one of the most important according to Alan is the rib box the development of the rib box which as he puts it comes from your own genetics and of course these two skeletal structures uh, these attributes which are part of your skeletal structure along with the amount of muscle that you can develop in the latissimus, that is the back, and in the front, that is the chest, will in, in sum give you your total chest development, a very true fact. But one of the things that he believes is the most important thing in chest development is the development of the rib box. I have talked about this several times, in particular in regards to the breathing squat. Here's a great shot again from the article. And you can tell, I mean, from this shot, Alan, I mean, he was a very complete uh, bodybuilder. Incredibly strong. Look at those arms. I mean, this guy is natural. And he's sporting at least 17-inch arms there. Those thighs are thick. His calves are thick. He's, he's, uh, his lats, they're so flared. There's, a, there's no gap when he puts his arm out. It's incredible. I mean, these guys were, were supermen, and I love talking about them, these guys. And I've heard that this really, um, uh, some people call this era from the 40s to, a bit, to I guess, to the, uh, what, to the 60s, uh, the silver era, silver era, golden era, I don't care. It's all the same thing to me. These guys were the pioneers, no doubt, and they looked amazing. So what were Alan's recommended exercise? There is no surprise to any of these exercises, except for maybe one or two, but of course, the breathing squat. I've talked about it, I don't know how many times now, but the breathing squat was one of the staple, one of the absolute fundamentals in this era of bodybuilding. And unfortunately, you don't see many people do it today. I see so many people doing Smith machine squats, leg presses, but nobody dares put a big, uh, you know, a big load on their back and do the breathing squat. How do you do it? I've done a video linked up here again done a video on it, several videos actually, I've even done a demonstration, but Alan actually says um, to take three to five deep breaths in between each rep. Uh, I mean, Steve Reeves has a slightly different recommendation um, with, uh, you know, you build up your breaths, but you know what, at the end of the day, it depends on you when you're doing the breathing squat. If you're tired, you're going to need to breathe more. And this, is, this is not a rigid thing, breathing between reps, I mean, the, the number of breaths between reps. But you should be breathing in between reps because that's what the breathing squat is about. Uh, and the breaths should be deep inhalations. This action actually stretches the rib box. And this is what the breathing squat is good for. Of course, the squatting action will build your legs and cause an increase in testosterone and growth hormone and, and make you hungry as hell. But the breathing pattern stretches the rib box it, it expands your lungs and and increases your cardiovascular capacity the breathing squat is such a marvelous exercise um, anyway continuing another great thing that i really learned 
because I do learn a lot from these articles is these other tips from Alan they're, they're fantastic keeping your hands close to your shoulders why why does he say that well it actually forces you to thrust out the rib box stretching the chest further I love that I love that another thing that I actually do practice and Alan recommends here is that at the top of the rep before you breathe you take a real deep breath in and you hold it during the rep that's the actual proper way of doing a breathing squat you must hold it and this also expands your chest uh, another thing he, he recommends is raising your heels of course to target the thighs better and, and to keep your spine more upright uh, incredibly of course Alan Stephan was an absolute superman. He obviously uh, very casually says in the article that he uses 300 pounds for 20 reps of three sets. Damn you, Alan Stephan. That's incredible. Pullovers were also part of the menu. Uh, in between squats, actually, he would say, just like Steve Reeves and many others, that you should do your pullovers in between squats uh, placing your back on a rounded surface. You can see he's actually got a medicine ball on the uh, on the um, bench. But nowadays you could do that or you could use one of those Swiss balls or even just a normal bench as you lie across it. The idea is to stretch the rib cage and use moderate weight. If you use too heavy weight, it becomes a latissimus exercise. Keeping the wrist straight is another great idea here from Alan. You can see that he's actually got his wrists slightly cocked up. And the reason is that, if, as he says, if your wrists are lagging behind, what will happen is it won't, it'll take away the stretch from the chest. Keeping your wrists straight and in line with your forearms forces the chest to stretch. These are fantastic points from a master, from the Superman, Alan Stephan. 15 reps times three sets with each set done in between squats. Another obvious exercise to be doing is the wide grip bench press. Again, I love the way he performs it. It's the same way I do it. You hold your breath during the breath, uh, during the, the rep. So you basically take a deep breath in at the very top of the motion before the weight comes down, you hold it and you actually perform the rep holding the breath in. This really expands the rib cage. Uh, it really stretches it. He, of course, being the Superman that he uh, that he was, would perform 10 reps with 240 pounds. Amazing, amazing, Alan Stephan, amazing. Flyers was also part of his regimen. Uh, he, of course, like Arnold and any and any other golden era uh, bodybuilder, knew that flies stretch the rib cage as well. Um, they, and as he says, if you perform it bent arm, it more targets the muscle, that is the pectoral muscle, but if you perform it with a straight arm, it really does stretch out the rib cage more, and you have to use a little less weight. There he is, performing dumbbell flies. Medium grip pull down was the fifth exercise he recommended, uh, in that it also helps in developing the serratus, that is the muscles that cover the rib box. Um, he, again, he would breathe in as the bar goes up to stretch the rib cage, and he also mentioned something very important: performing and performing the the exercise seated, where you can't lock your legs in, and in, as in seated on the floor, actually uh, works the rib cage more. That's a great idea, and I, and I might try it myself in the gym. Um, yeah, it's a great idea from Alan. The, these guys. I mean, they're, they're, these little tips are, are gold, and I hope you can appreciate them. This final uh, exercise, dip between bars, I've seen it uh, performed by many bodybuilders in, in, in the golden era. And here, Alan has an actual dumbbell on his back as he's performing it. Uh, he recommends holding your breath in again before the exercise has begun, and then going down, holding the breath in, and then coming up and then breathing out. Notice the importance of the breath with Alan's recommendations. The breath was key. Holding, holding a breath, taking a deep breath in and holding it during the exercise, whether it's squatting, pullovers, uh, bench pressing, flies, uh, pull downs, or dips, any of these exercises, breathing in as, as deeply as possible and holding this inhalation was key in stretching the rib box, in expanding the rib cage. 
A final note from Alan is that he actually mentions some, some wonderful advice to take a deep breath every day, any moment, because it's good for your internal organs. It stretches the spine and improves your posture. And he finds that, you know, a lot of bodybuilders, he actually said, walk around slouched with their um, uh, sh shoulders rounded forward and, and they don't look like bodybuilders. So he actually says, take a deep breath in and keep your chest out. And that's a great um, advice. I mean, you, you're breathing in air, you're, you, you're nourishing yourself, it's healthy. And it also improves your appearance and you look huge and swole. <laughs> so that's Alan Steffen's tips on, uh, on life and on developing a wonderful rib cage and chest. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. There'll be many more videos coming up like this. Thank you for watching. Leave me your comments. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now.